All right, you ready to have your minds blown? Oh, man, your minds are going to be blown big time, I'm telling you. This is going to rock your world. This is so crazy. This is called the Delay Choice Quantum Eraser. You can read about it here at the wiki article. Type in Delay Choice Quantum Eraser. I also recommend reading the discussion by clicking on the tab here. After you read the article, read the discussion, Archive 1 and 2. On Archive 1, I recommend reading this article here because the commentary was approved by the original experimenter who is uh, Yoon, Yoon Ho Kim. <clears throat> However, first to understand this, you're going to have to go and understand the double slit experiment. Get a good handle on the double slit experiment and what it, what it implies, what it means. So go to YouTube and type in double slit experiment and watch this video. It's pretty informative and very easy to follow. Basically, uh, what's important about the double slit experiment is that the results were very strange. When a particle, when <clears throat> the laser emits one particle at a time through a double slit and then it reaches a photoelectric plate which records where it lands, it may, if we don't know the path, it makes the interference pattern, right? That was mind-blowing because it made no sense. How can an interference pattern emerge when a single particle is passed through the you know through the detectors or through the slit, sorry, and then is and it hits the electric plate? That's impossible. Uh, so they said, well, there must be an answer to this. So they decided to record it. That is to put detectors on the this black line here represents the double slit. So they put detectors on the slits to find out what indeed what slit the particle went through. Well, this is weird. Once they knew what slit the particle went through, the interference pattern disappeared, and he had a clump pattern, as you would expect, as you will get if you shine a flashlight through two slits on a piece of paper on your wall. This is exactly what you're going to see. That's actually what they expected to see in the first place anyway, but when they used a laser, that's not what happened. Even when they emitted one at a time, that's not what happened. So anyway, go watch that video if that makes sense. Yeah, now, if that makes sense to you, then the problem was is they, they said, well, maybe the interference pattern is, you know, that is, now we know that light has this uh, an interference pattern, right? So once they accept that, because you have to, that light and electrons and all particles have this interference pattern, they're like, well, okay, well, what's, what is collapsing the interference pattern when we use the detectors? So, you know, they had to accept something very bizarre that, hey, photons are like a particle wave and electrons are like a particle wave. They're just both simultaneously, and somehow they interact with themselves or with the you know, probability of where it might end up. Anyways, so that's all very strange and weird. So they accept that, and now it's what what is happening when they put the detectors there? Are the detectors themselves now on, on this on this diagram? These black uh, diamonds are the detectors. So there's you know five detectors here. The uh, green BSs. These are crystals that have random properties that allow the photon die to pass through it or to bounce off it. There's exactly a 50/50 chance. This is a type of prism. This is a lens that focuses the direction of, of the signal, of the signal uh, part of the photon. This here, the BBO, is a crystal that separates the uh, photon into two um, entangled photons that are of half frequency of the original photon. They're entangled means that if you know the state of one, you know the state of the other. So, um, it pa so the, the laser will emit a photon, it'll either go through slit A or B randomly. If it goes through slit A, it's split into two, a single photon which goes to D0, and a idler photon which will bounce off here, bounce here, hit D4, or it'll go through here, bounce off to mirror, go through here, D1, or it'll bounce off to mirror, bounce off here, go to D2. So when it comes out of slit A, there's three detectors that it can be recorded at. If it's recorded at D4, we know for a fact that it came from slit A. If it's recorded at D2 or D1, we don't know whether it came from A or B, because B could also go to D3. If it goes to D3, we know it came from B. But if it goes through here, bounces off here, bounces off here, goes D1, we don't know whether it was A or B, because it can be either A or B that hits this detector, and the same with D2. D0 is uh, simply, we don't know, we can't know, uh, D0 until we know it's split, because whether the particle came from A or B, it goes to this lens, and you know, that is the signal goes to this lens and hits D0. That means that we have no information at D0. D0 tells us nothing. And what, what do we learn from the double slit experiment? We learned that 
If we don't know the path of a particle, we should get an interference pattern. So before this experiment was conducted, you know, this, the physicists made predictions that D0, all particles that hit that are detected D0 and are recorded at the coincidence counter, should show an interference pattern. And that's exactly what happens. Exactly as they predicted is what happens. Now what's so interesting about that finding is that actually proves that the detector is not what's interfering with the, is not what's collapsing the waveform in the double slit experiment. Remember that in the double slit experiment when we don't know when there's no detector set up, the photon goes through and gets an interference pattern. But when we do set detectors up, the interference pattern disappears and we get the clump pattern, the two lines. And so the prediction, or you know, people have suggested perhaps, the detector itself, just the detector being there, is interfering with and, and collapsing the waveform. Well, if that were true, then then when the, 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 then everything recorded here, this is a detector, so all the photons that record at the detector should have a collapsed waveform, which means we should have a clump pattern. But we don't have a clump pattern, we have an interference pattern here at D0, which is exactly what we'd expect to have because we don't know what slit it came through at this point in time. That is, the time it takes for the signal to, to go through here, go through the lens and hit this detector, its idler has bounced off the Glenn Thompson prism and has either bounced off of the random crystal and is on its way to D4 or has gone through the random crystal and it's on its way to MB. So when the signal hits here, its idler, its idler that is its um, twin, its, uh, you know, the one it's entangled with, is either on its way to D4 or on its way to this mirror and thus on its way to either D2 or D1. Now that's important, that means that once this is detected that we potentially know this in the future, by the time it's recorded here, we'll know whether this particle what came from A or B. We can't know whether this particle came from A or B until its twin is detected at D4, D2, or D1. If it's detected at D4, we know it came from A. If it's detected at D2 and D1, we don't know, which means that the prediction then is that D, D1 and D2 should cause clump patterns, or excuse me, should cause interference patterns, since, uh, you know, again, interference patterns, since we don't know, since we don't know what slit it came from. It's impossible to know what slit it came from. That is, it is effecti effectively was erased. And since we don't know, like, like when it bounced here and when it was on its way here, here it's like, okay, maybe we know its information because it can go here, but once it passes through here, it's erased. Now we don't know what slit it came through. So D1 and D2 will give us uh, interference patterns like D0 as, as predicted, and that's exactly what happens. Once the information was recorded over here, the information goes over here and is recorded, then indeed uh, we see that, hey, we have interference patterns as predicted. However, D3 and D4, since we know it's put, you know what, what slit it came through, then we should expect the clump pattern. And when that's recorded, that's exactly what we get. We get the clump pattern. So the predictions are correct. We, all, the, all the predictions are true. But if the detectors were, were, were what is causing the waveform to collapse in the double slit experiment, then all of the photons that hit D0 should be collapsed, since this detector itself should collapse the wave function. In other words, we should get a clump pattern, but we don't. We get an interference pattern always, no matter what happens to its idler, whether whether its idler ends up at D4, D2, D1, or D3, the D0, its, its signal, is always an interference pattern. Your mind should be effectively blown. You should be like, whoa, that is insane. That, you know, because that means that our consciousness, or the fact that we can know what slit it came through is exactly what causes the interference pattern to collapse. That is, the in the double slit experiment, we know now, in the double slit experiment, that it is not the detector that is collapsing the waveform. It is the fact that we can know what path it went through collapses. Not that we do know, just the fact that we can know. We never have to check this information. We, we, we can say, after the information reaches here, we'll never look at it, we'll erase it. And so we can set up a device that, once recorded, before we have a time to check the 
check this information, even if we wanted to change our mind, we set up a device that will blow up, that will melt all this information, and that even if we wanted to check it, by the time we could try to check it, the other device would have melted all the information, and it's impossible to see. Even if you did that, you would still get the interference patterns, even though we would never know because we won't be able to check it. But if we put a random occurrence, whether it might destroy it, it might not destroy it, the fact that we can know, and, and that is those 50, those 50 times where it doesn't burn the information, we look at it, we will still see that some of these, the same results, that is, uh, these ones will have clumps and these ones will have, or excuse me, these ones will have clump patterns, these ones will have interference patterns. So that doesn't change. All right, I can't go into more information. I wish I could. If you'd like me to make a following video, explaining more about this and why it's so weird in its implications, please let me know. I'll make another follow-up video. And in that follow-up video, I'll, I'll give the explanations, and I'll give my explanation, which answers all these paradoxes within physics. It's really cool, really bizarre, but cool.